Now we come to my favorite subtraction method, using one more than one before. This is my go-to subtraction technique that I use whenever I use subtraction. It's a lot faster and a lot easier. The first thing we got to know is complement numbers. Complement numbers are numbers that add up to a base number, if you remember from our lesson in all from 9 last from 10. In this case, we're just adding up to 10. So the complement of 1 is 9, complement of 2 is 8, 3 is 7, 4 is 6, 5 is 5, 6 is 4, 7 is 3, 8 is 2, and 9 is 1. These are numbers that add up to 10. Oh, also, I guess I should put the number 10 and 0. So if I ask you what's the complement of 4, if I ask you what's the complement of 4, you're going to say 6. If I ask you what's the complement of 7, you're going to say 3. Okay, the complement number, these are numbers that add up to 10. The other thing we got to remember from a previous lesson is that idea of one more than one before. So if I have a 2 with a dot above it, that equals the next number up, which is 3. Using these two concepts, we're going to go through the subtraction problems, and you're going to see how this is a really, really good method of doing subtraction. This is my favorite. If the previous technique that I showed you using bar numbers was difficult, then this technique is probably going to be the easiest one you learn. So what we're going to be doing is doing subtraction by doing addition by using complement numbers. So you can see here that 3 minus 4, I can't do 3 minus 4. So I'm going to take the complement of 4... Okay, the complement of 4, which is 6, and I'm going to add it to 3. Okay, so 3 minus 4 I can't do, so I take the complement of 4 and I add it to 3. So 6 and 3 give me 9. Okay, and whenever I do this adding the complement, so I added it to the top, I'm going to move a little dot over here. Okay, now I'm doing 7 minus 9. I can't do, remember, 8 with a dot is now 9. Okay, so I, I'm going to add the complement of 9, okay, the complement of 9, which is 1, okay, the complement of 9, and I'm going to add it to 7. So the complement of 9 is 1 plus 7 gives me 8. And then I bring that little dot over. Okay, now 2 minus 2, remember 1 with a dot above it equals 2, so 2 minus 2 gives me 0. Okay, the next column here I have 5 minus 6. I'm going to take the complement of 6 and add it to 5. The complement of 6 is 4. 4 plus 5 gives me 9. Bring the dot over. Now 3 minus 2 gives me 1. So here's our answer. So to get started, you can see with this method that you're basically you're doing addition. So you're doing subtraction by doing addition. We're just adding the complement. Okay, if the number down here is bigger than the number up here, I can't subtract. Instead of crossing out and borrowing, I'm just going to add the complement. Let's try another example. All right, here's our second problem. So we start over here at the right. 4 minus 7 I can't do. So instead of 4 minus 7, I'm going to take the complement of 7 and add it to 4. So we see from our little thing, our little chart here. The complement of 7 is 3. So I'm going to take 3 and add it to 4. The complement of 7 is 3. I'm going to add that to the top number. 3 and 4 give me 7. Okay, when I do that, I add a little dot to the next number. Okay, so now I have 5 minus 8. Okay, I can't do that. So the complement of 8, the complement of 8 is 2. So I'm going to take 2 and add it to 5. So the complement of 8 is 2. 2 plus 5 gives me 7. And I take that little dot and I add it to the next number. Okay, looking at the next column, I have 3 minus 10. Okay, 9 with a dot is 10. So I see the complement of 10 is 0. So I add 0 to 3. 0 and 3 gives me 3. And then I add the little dot. Remember, anytime, anytime we're doing this complement where you're adding it, adding it, adding it to the top... Anytime I add something to the top, I have to bring that dot over to the next number. Okay, now I have 4 minus 7. So the complement of 7, once again, is 3. 3 and 4 give me 7. Take that dot. Now I have 3 minus 2. 3 minus 2 gives me 1. So here we have our answer.
Once you get this method down after practicing it for a while, this is going to, you're going to be doing this so fast. You're just going to basically speed through these problems um, extremely fast. Let's try another example. Once we get going, I'll show you how fast you're able to do these. Okay, so once again, starting over here at the right. The complement of 2, I can't do 1 minus 2, so the complement of 2 is 8. Add 8 to 1, I get 9. Bring the dot over. Now I'm going to take the complement of 7 and add it to 2, so that's 3 and 2. 3 and 2 give me 5. Take the dot over. Take the complement of 9. 8 dot is 9. The complement of 9 is 1. Add it to 3, that gives me 4. Bring the dot over. 6 minus 6 is 0. 7 minus 8 I can't do, so I'm going to take the complement of 8 and add it to 7. That's 2. 2 and 7 give me 9. Bring the dot over. 9 minus 4 equals 5. So you can see how fast this method is. It's a very fast method. All you're doing is adding. The reason why it's so fast and efficient is because you're just adding. You're not really doing subtraction. All you're doing is adding. You're taking a complement and adding it to the top number. Okay, I'm gonna let's do another example problem. I'll slow it down again, but I just kind of wanted to show you how fast you're able to do this. Once you get this method down, you're gonna be speeding through subtraction faster than anybody you know. Like I said, this is my favorite method. This is the method that I use whenever I do subtraction. This is my favorite method, hands down. My favorite, most fast way of doing subtraction. Okay, starting over at the right, 1 minus 4. Instead of crossing out and borrowing, I'm going to add the complement of 4 to 1. So the complement of 4, you could see, is 6. 6 and 1 give me 7. Bring the dot over. Now I'm going to take the complement of 4. Remember, 3 dot equals 4. The complement of 4 is 6. Add 6 to 3. 6 and 3 give me 9. Bring the dot over. Okay, now I have 2 minus 7, so the complement of 7, remember 6 dot is now is 7. The complement of 7 we could see is 3, so I'm going to take 3 and add it to 2. 3 and 2 give me 5. Bring the dot over. Okay, now I have 9 dot. 9 dot is now 10. Remember, if you have a dot above it, it's the next number up, so 9 dot is 10. The complement of 10 is 0. So I'll take 0, add it to 6, that's 6. 0 and 6 is 6. Bring the dot over. Now I have 8 and 9. Complement of 9 is 1. Add 1 to 8 gives me 9. Bring the dot over. Finally, 5 minus 3 gives me 2. Okay, let's do a few more problems. A few more examples. Starting at the right, we have 9 minus 8. 9 minus 8 gives us 1. Okay, now I'm doing 7 minus 8. 7 minus 8 we can't do, so we're going to take the complement of 8 and add it to 7. The complement of 8 is 2. 2 and 7 give us 9. Bring the dot over. Now I just want to really quick point out that the only time we make these dots is when we add the complement in the previous column. So here we didn't do that. We didn't add the complement. We didn't add the complement to the top, so I didn't make a dot here. But here on this step, we added the complement of 8 to 7, so we bring a dot over. So now we have 7 minus 8, so the complement of 7 dot, remember 7 dot is now equal to 8. The complement of 8 is 2, 2 and 7 give us 9. Bring that dot over. Now we have 6 minus 5, 4 dot equals 5, so remember if you have a dot, it's the next number up. So 6 minus 5 gives us 1. Now I have 4 minus 5, so I can't do. So the complement of 5, complement of 5 is 5. So I'm going to take 5, add it to 4. Remember, the complement of 5 is 5. So we take the complement, add it to 4. 5 and 4 give us 9. Take that dot over. Now we have 4 minus 3. 4 minus 3 give us 1. So here's our answer. All right, so let's try another problem. Okay, starting at the right, we have 3 minus 3. 3 minus 3 give us 0. Next column, we have 2 minus 3. So we're going to take the complement of 3. We see the complement of 3 is 7. So 
We take 7 and add it to 2. 7 and 2 give us 9. Bring that dot over. Now we have 4 minus 3. 4 minus 3 give us 1. And remember, there's no need to take the dot over because we didn't add the complement method. Here, see, here we added the complement. So we brought the dot over. But 4 minus 3, I don't need to add the complement. I could do 4 minus 3. 4 minus 3 gives me 1. So I don't need to bring the dot over this time. So now I have 4 minus 5. The complement of 5 is 5. Add 5 to 4, it gives me 9. Bring that dot over. Now I have 8 minus 8. 8 minus 8 is 0. And 6 minus 6 is 0. So here we got our answer. Alright, let's do another example. Okay, let's do something like this. So 2 minus 8 can't do, so I'm going to take the complement of 8, add it to 2. So the complement of 8 is 2. Complement of 8 is 2. So I'm going to take that complement and add it to the top. So 2 and 2 give me 4. When I add the complement method, I bring that dot over to the next column. So now I have the complement of 4. Complement of 4 is 6. So I take 6, add it to 0. 6 and 0 give me 6. Bring that dot over. Now here I have the complement of 10. Complement of 10 is 0. So I'm going to take 0 and add it to 8. 0 and 8 give me 8. Bring that dot over. Now here I have the complement of 6. 5 dot is a 6. So the complement of 6 is 4. I'm going to take 4 and add it to 4. I'm going to take the complement of 6 and add it to 4. 4 and 4 give me 8. Bring that dot over. Now I have 6 minus 1. 6 minus 1 gives me 5. And 1 minus 0 give me 1. So here's our answer. All right, one more example problem, and then we'll move on to the next lesson. Starting at the right, we take the complement of 7 and add it to 5. So complement of 7 is 3. 3 and 5 give us 8. Bring that dot over. 4 minus 2. 4 minus 2 equals 2. 7 minus 3. 7 minus 3 equals 4. Complement of 3, we're going to add to 2. So that's 7. 7 and 2 give us 9. Bring the dot over. Finally, 8 minus 4 equals 4. So you can see kind of the speed and efficiency of this method. It's a very easy, simple thing to do. You're basically just adding. You're just doing addition. This is how computers do subtraction. This is the same method that computers use. You're doing subtraction by doing addition. So if you can memorize, you know, your complement numbers. Complement numbers, once again, add up to a base number. You can memorize these. It's pretty easy. You're just going to be adding these numbers to the top row. Doing subtraction by addition. This is my favorite method to use. This is the method that I use personally whenever I do subtraction. This is the one. This Once you get this method down, once you practice this problem, practice this method. Once you practice it, you're going to be zipping through subtraction really fast. This is the fastest way I know to do subtraction. It's very easy. All you're doing is a doing it, subtraction by doing addition. You're not even subtracting. All you're doing is adding. <laughs> Keep practicing this. Write out a couple problems of your own. Practice a couple problems. If you need a calculator to check your answer, that's okay. My suggestion is to write out about 20 or 30 of these and go through them. Go through 20 or 30 problems. See how well you're doing. See how fast you can get at it. Check your answers with a calculator and just keep practicing. Create that's that, that's how I got good at this stuff. As I just started after I read a book on this, I just started making my own problems. That's what you want to do. You kind of want to create your own word, uh, create your own work, your own homework, and go through and get real good at this. Just keep practicing. You'll get there.